What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to the Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football channel. As always, it's your boy, Nicholas. We're coming at you with a quick video. I want to debate the number one overall pick, David Johnson or Le'Veon Bell. It's relevant to everybody because every single league has a number one pick in it. Ain't that right? So I wanted to break down some of the facts before you decide on which guy you want. So let's get it. All right, so I got a little statistical breakdown I'm gonna put on the screen right now. Kind of just, these are the very raw statistics from, from a bird's eye point of view. Bell versus David Johnson in all the major fantasy statistical category. We see Bell actually outpaced David Johnson in half point PPR and regular full PPR leagues on a fantasy points per game basis. Come on, bro. Sorry for the noise in the background. I think someone's outside trimming the lawn. So I'll just speak up louder like some clam chowder. So of course, David Johnson played in all 16 games. He got hurt in the last game of the season, so he came out early. Le'Veon Bell had the suspension, missed four games total last year, and played in a total of 12. So when we're analyzing this on a points per game basis, for the most part, Bell outperformed David Johnson in fantasy points and just rushing efficiency, you know, yards per carry, yards per game, receptions and stuff like that, where David Johnson shined was the touchdown categories. Outscored him 20 to 9, averaging 1.25 touchdowns a game, where Bell only averaged 0.75. Overall, though, Bell had a lot more touches. He averaged 28 a game compared to David Johnson's 23.3. I mean, overall, David Johnson had the most touches. He actually led the league in touches to 373, but on a per game basis, it was all Bell. Bell averaged a ridiculous 157 yards per game from scrimmage. Realistically, it's just ridiculous on all accounts for both guys, right? And those are the statistical breakdowns, but going forward next year, you need to look at it much deeper than that to, to kind of break these two apart. The biggest factor that most people would would take into account between the two has to be Le'Veon Bell's history in terms of injuries, in terms of suspensions. He's played in only 18 of a possible 32 games in the last two seasons. He's dealt with knee, ankle, uh, groin, foot injuries. So that is definitely a concern for most people. They're both 25 years old, but Bell has a lot more tread on the tires. Realistically, you're, you're splitting hairs between the two. They're both ridiculously talented running backs, possibly of the last 10 years. No offense to Adrian Peterson, but they're a lot more versatile, and they're the unquestioned number one workhorse in their offense. So let's break it down a little bit more. From Le'Veon Bell's side, if you're nervous about the return of Martavis Bryant, you shouldn't be. I looked at the splits, and Le'Veon Bell actually averages more fantasy points per game with Bryant in the lineup than without him. Which kind of makes sense when you think about it because Martavis Bryant is a ridiculous talent. Spreads the defense when you have Antonio Brown, Martavis Bryant. You don't have those type of weapons in Arizona to really get the pressure off of David Johnson in the front seven there. Another thing to consider, not a huge point of emphasis, is Pittsburgh went for two-point conversions on 32% of their touchdowns. Most in the NFL, next leading team was like more than 5% less than the Steelers went for. So you're getting a lot more opportunities at the two-point conversion. Again, it's not a big deal, but it's, it's something to look at because they've been going going in that trend for the last few years now. So more opportunities for Bell to score those extra two points. When you look at the offensive lines, if you compare the two, Pittsburgh is widely considered a top five line. Very, very good. They're ranked number three in run blocking and football outsiders, number four in pass blocking. Overall, a number three ranked line by pro football focus as well. They're returning all five starters to their line, so they should, again, be an elite front. When you look at the Cardinals, not a great pass blocking line, but they did rank seventh in uh, run blocking per football outsiders. They're 17th overall by pro football focus entering the year. So you'd give that a win for Le'Veon Bell. What I would say David Johnson has the upper hand in is he has that breakaway speed. David Johnson has very much the capability to just break off like a 50, 60, 70 yard touchdown run. While Bell is capable of it, he doesn't do it anywhere near as often as David Johnson does it. You see Bell just like methodically kind of tear up the defense. Eight yards here, nine yards here, 12 yards here, eight yards here, where David Johnson can do that and then bust out for a 60 yard touchdown run. So I would give him the edge there. When you look in the passing game as well, while Le'Veon Bell looking back at the charts, saw more work, more receptions per game, more targets. He might be more involved, but when you look at air yards, the yards, I, I hate getting this statistical in fantasy because I think sometimes like when is enough enough, like air yards per efficiency adjusted per yards per target, like 
like, all right, like calm down. But look at air yards, it kind of just shows you almost like a depth of target or something like that. Like, I guess how much the quarterback trusts to throw you the ball down the field. And David Johnson kind of dominated Le'Veon Bell on that. Bell got a lot of screens, got a lot of dump offs where David Johnson would see a lot of targets kind of going down the sideline or, or deeper in, in, in that sense. So he's getting more opportunities to break big big plays in the in the passing game. Something else you've been hearing a lot about this offseason is that David Johnson, his goal, a thousand rushing yards, a thousand receiving yards. He wants to get that. I'm taking this with a huge grain of salt. You ask any running back in the league, any player in the league what their goal is, they're gonna say, I want 2,000 rushing yards. I wanna lead the league in passing touchdowns. A running back will say some shit like that. I want to lead the league in passing touches. Like, okay. Everyone wants to do some crazy shit that's never been done before, of course. What I will say about David Johnson's situation is, one, he was very close to doing it last year. He was like 150 or 180 receiving yards away, and he got hurt in the last game. But there's a lot of people on the Cardinals, you know, like Larry Fitzgerald, other players included, coming out and being like, yeah, we are definitely backing up his goal here. We want to see him hit that goal. Well, I mean, that really doesn't mean much. It, it could mean something like, it, you saw it last year with Antonio Gates, right? Hunter Henry was definitely the more effective tight end, but they wanted Gates to get the all-time touchdown leading like record, right? So they're they're kind of forcing, Rivers knows that in his head, so does the coach. They're forcing red zone passes to him sometimes, sometimes in the end zone. So, you know, you might see David Johnson out there in situations where at the end of the game, they don't need him in the game, but they're going to keep him out there maybe to hit that goal or hit something like that. So I don't look at it as a big, like, turning point. That would never make me choose him over Bell because I'm sure if you ask Bell what his goal is, he'd probably say the same exact thing. But it is something to keep in mind, I guess. And you see David Johnson saying, I want 30 touches a game. Coach Bruce Arians is saying the same thing. He's like, we could definitely feed him 30 touches a game. He's young. He should be able to handle the workload. So while Le'Veon Bell got 28 a game, David Johnson only got like 23 and a half. It's still a monster workload. But the coach, you could see the coach, you know, sometimes a coach might come out and say, hey, we want to limit his touches a little bit more this year because we're concerned of injury, where it's the opposite in Arizona. And they're like, we want to give him as many touches as possible. If nothing else, you know, it's a good thing as opposed to a bad thing. Both the teams are top 10 scoring teams in the NFL, so they'll get plenty of scoring opportunities. What I thought was interesting was when I looked at their usage down by the end zone, inside the 10, inside the five. Bell had four targets inside the opponent's 10 yard line. He only played in 12 games, so four targets inside the 10. Big Ben had 29 passes in that area. He was tied for 12th among amongst quarterbacks in the NFL. David Johnson didn't get that many targets down there either. He only saw five targets inside the 10, whereas Palmer had 38 throws there, which is fifth in the NFL among quarterbacks. So neither of them are used that much down that area in terms of the receiving game. But I would say Bell's style, if you break it down by like percentage or like ratio per games, Bell got more. I would say Bell's style is more fit for those close area, those close knit kind of throws those dump offs, right? Because Bell works really well in short spaces. So you give him a screen and Carson Palmer absolutely loves throwing the ball to like Larry Fitzgerald in that area. He's, Allen Robinson's the only dude over the last two years who's got more targets inside the 10 yard line than Larry Fitzgerald. So he's heavily utilized there. Where the big split comes is when you look at rushes. Leon Bell only had five rushes inside the five yard line last year. Five goal line rushes. You look at David Johnson, he had 22 inside the five. That's where the big discrepancy comes into play. And that's why most likely David Johnson had 20 touchdowns compared to Le'Veon Bell's nine. So it, it's kind of mm, like, what do you make of this, right? 22 carries inside the five compared to just five. Bell had 14 inside the 10. David Johnson had 33 inside the 10. Like I said, they're both high scoring offenses. They're both going to get tons of scoring opportunities. I think the addition of Martavis Bryant definitely helps Bell, not just on like a points basis, but he'll give them more opportunities to get near the end zone. And I think like, it's totally possible that David Johnson is just a, a huge animal, complete anomaly to the fantasy football world. But I think those things, because those teams are both very close in scoring offenses, I think those even themselves out. Like, I would be shocked if Bell only got five rushes inside the five again this year, like only five goal line touches, and David Johnson beat him out by like 20 again. Also to make the case, Last year was like a ridiculous year for the same way the year prior was really bad for running backs. That's why everyone went zero wide receiver. Last year was really, really, really unbelievably good for running backs and bad for wide receivers. So that's why you see these guys at the top of the list. You would be naive to project anyone for 20 touchdowns in a year, right? Like you can't expect David Johnson to replicate that 20 touchdown number. 15 is probably realistic. And I would say 15 is probably the same for around Bell as well. So when I think of it, Bell already sees the touches. I think he's more involved in the passing game. Bell is my guy. He's my number one pick this year. I think if he brings those touchdown numbers up a little bit, even a couple more scores, and David Johnson doesn't have his ridiculous 20 touchdowns again, 
I think Bell kind of pulls away with that number one fantasy spot. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love either guy as my number one on the team. And I think you're getting an elite RB1. You're literally getting two roster spots in one spot. They're both, they're like a wide receiver three and a running back one in one spot. So that's completely my opinion on Le'Veon Bell. I just wanted to lay the facts out there. Offensive line, what changes are made to the teams this year, things like that, their usage rate. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please go... If you did, go follow me on Twitter. I'm throwing out little stat nuggets all the time. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And let me know down below, are you going with Le'Veon Bell or Dave? And I'm talking about in, um, oh, I guess I didn't really cover standard versus PPR and stuff like that. Bell's my guy, I think either. I might actually lean David Johnson standard and then Bell and half point and PPR, but I don't play any standard league, so I usually don't touch on those topics, but I might lean David Johnson just because the touchdown total is probably gonna be higher. But let me know down below who you would rather take. And I mean, I mean depending on, I guess, your league style, would you rather have Johnson or Le'Veon Bell and why? And also, if you're interested in getting in the subscriber league, check my last video I put on instructions how to get into that league. My fantasy football draft guide is dropping within the next few days, so stay looking out for video on that. Appreciate all y'all. So scroll down, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed. See y'all next time. Peace.